I'm Kathy, welcome to my channel. And today we have a special video. We are joining a uh, guest through FaceTime, via FaceTime. Hi, Violet, how are you? <laughs> We've never done this before. We are try trying our best here to connect virtually, keep social distancing. Um, and Violet is expecting, she is 29 weeks along. So she is getting close to the date and she's very excited. We're excited for you too. <laughs> and we really appreciate you joining us today. Now this video today focuses on pubic symphysis dysfunction. It takes a lot to say that one. And what does that mean? That means that you're probably experiencing, if you have this uh, pubic symphysis, you're probably experiencing some pain in the pelvic area by the pubic bone. And the pubic bone is not a single bone. It's uh, where the two halves of the pelvis meet and there's a little cartilage in between. Now what happens is sometimes in pregnancy, the bony part of the pubis separates from the joint and that causes pain. It could be really uncomfortable. Today's practice is to help with that discomfort. It's going to stabilize and strengthen your pelvis today. And I'd like for Violet to share a little bit about her experience with pubic symphysis. So I did start to experience this, and it's very, very uncomfortable, a very, very loud pain because it's at that special place. <laughs> and um, I think I was about 16, 17 weeks, so it started pretty early on, and I had overstretched. And I do teach yoga and practice yoga, but with how we have our new, the relaxing and everything starting to help us stretch a little more. I wasn't so familiar with that. So I just continued to do what I was doing and didn't listen so well to my body. So I did end up overdoing it. And um, the, the pain's pretty intense. I, I couldn't walk for a little while and laying down, like turning to the side going side to side, getting out of bed, putting on like short, standing on one leg. It was just this constant pressure and I needed to rest it and um, work with Kathy to give me some, um, some uh, stretches and strengthening so I could get it back to optimal function, which eventually it did, but it took a little while. It took some rest and then to work with what we're going to be working with today. It helped out a lot. And now it's it's back to normal, so I feel Yay. pretty good, yeah. It's not broken anymore. <laughs> so you made a good point about resting. If you're feeling a flare-up right now, it's really good to rest for a little bit. But if you are going to go back to your practice, this practice specifically will be helpful for stabilizing the pelvis and hopefully not aggravating it in the future. All right, let's start then. We'll start on kneeling pose. And I do recommend today, as an option, a block if you have and a blanket but you don't need them. So if you wanna just get started, you can. And Violet will be using that as well. Now starting in kneeling pose, sit on the heels. And kneeling pose may be comfortable here or it may be more comfortable to have a block in between the heels and sit on the block on that second edge, that uh, thinner edge of the block. So you could do that as well. Or even place a blanket in between the sits bones and the heels. Knees forward, toes back. And now stack the shoulders over the hips. Rest the hands on the thighs and broaden in the chest. And tune into your breath. Deepen your breath into the belly around your baby and breathe with your baby. Slowly exhale. And do that two more times. Deepen the breath. Expand through the ribs, around the belly, around the chest. And then slowly let all the air out again. Repeat, cleansing breath in, slow breath out. Now gently open the eyes. Feel your sits bones on the block or on your heels and energetically bring the hips towards the center, drawing more energy into the pelvic area, more stabilization. And now soften the chin to the chest, move into the neck. Inhale, the left ear to the left shoulder. And open through both sides of the neck. Soften on the exhale, chin to chest. Inhale over to the other side, to the right shoulder. Continue to move side to side. 
Opening the upper back. Listening to all those little crunches and pops. Release tension from the tops of the shoulders as well. And relax the arms. And I'll do one more each side. One more to the left side and to the right side. You can also stay on one side if it feels better to hang out for a bit. And then meet with the chin to the chest. And look forward. And roll the shoulders now. Shoulders up to the ears and back. Open your heart space as you roll the shoulders back. Inhale, shoulders up to the ears, draw a circle with them, draw them back behind you, and then repeat that again. Inhale, shoulders up and back, and let go of some of that tension throughout the upper spine. Now extend your left hand down to the mat or to the floor, and bring your right hand overhead, stretch to the side, come into your side body. And we've been sitting on the kneeling pose for a while. Is that okay for you, Violet? Are you feeling any tension? Sitting on the block there, is that okay? It feels good with the block, it's a little. Okay, good. So if you don't have the block and you want to release and maybe bring the legs forward, that's okay too. Just continue to bring the sides of the hip towards the center. Now come over to the other side for your stretch. Right hand on the floor, left hand overhead. Open into the side body, opposite side. And keep the sits bones grounded. Now return to the center. Come forward onto the hands and knees. And if you do have the block, it'd be nice to use it for cat and cow. That's gonna bring some more awareness to the center, the midline. Place the block right in between. It's a little awkward to place it in between the thighs. Uh, it's wrist underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips and tops of the feet on the mat. As you inhale, soften your belly forward and your chest up and bring the thighs towards the block. So don't drop the block. And on the exhale, round in the back, look at your belly and again, squeeze the inner thighs towards the block. So that's gonna create more of that strength and stable stability in the pelvis. Inhale forward, undulate in the back. Heart comes up, shoulder heads back. Exhale round in the spine. Drop your tailbone, press into the tops of the feet and press into the floor. Do two more, inhale, soften the belly, extend the spine. Exhale round in the back. Bring the hip points towards one another. Inner thighs, squeeze gently. And then let's just do one more cycle. Inhale, open, soften the belly. Exhale, round in the spine. Release the crown of the head and the tailbone. And then return to center. You can move the block to the side. Walk the hands back to the knees, sit back on the heels. And you don't need the block for this one, we'll be here momentarily, giving your, your wrist a little break, rotate in the wrist. That's another thing that happens in pregnancy too, right? The wrist can get very tender and pain in the wrist. All right, and now come forward again. And this is another strengthener. There's a variation to this that a lot of people do balancing on one knee. Um, and one hand. We'll do a variation on it. Bring your right hand forward, bicep by the ear, hold, and now lift your left knee only an inch off the floor. And as you do that, squeeze the hips to the center. Again, I keep repeating that, but that's where we're creating the stabilization is by squeezing the hips to the midline, the outer hips. And being aware of the pelvic area. And now soften your right hand, bring that left knee down and hold to the other side, balance, counterbalance on the other side. Left arm forward, bicep by the ear, pick up the right knee this time, only a little bit off the floor, so it doesn't have to lift very high. Be aware, active engagement through the legs and then the pelvis, the hips. 
and then slowly release the knee down and the hand. We'll do one more on each side. Right hand forward, left knee lifts. Keep breathing, don't hold the breath. <laughs> I know it's hard, right? Soften the right hand down, soften the left knee down, and extend the left leg. Usually when we're doing something a little more challenging, we stop, we hold our breath. Bring the right knee up slightly. So really it's only about an inch or two off the mat. And now release the left hand, bring both knees down to the floor, and come into some hip circles to release and bring some more fluid motion. Now you can stay on the hands if your wrists are feeling tender, come onto your fists. Inhale forward, exhale back to the heels. Start with small circles, and if you'd like to build into them, you can move further back into the heels, make a big circle if you like. But since we're trying to create stability, stay aware of how it feels for you. And that's individual for each person. Now, because the legs are close together, the hips are coming towards center, this should be fine for pubic symphysis. And now return to the center, reverse, come forward and back, small circles to start. Make sure to check in. And then if you'd like to go deeper, you can. But Violet made a good point. It's always important to listen, to rest, modify, because sometimes things in pregnancy, they get aggravated a little bit worse than before pregnancy. It takes a little longer to heal as well. One more circle to the left and then return to center. Now walk the hands back to the knees again, sit on the heels. Let's take a moment to spend some time with the pelvis once again, hands on the thighs, and rock your pelvis forward. Feel how your tailbone sticks out a little bit. And now tuck your tailbone underneath you and sit back into the heels. So it's almost like you're rounding a little bit through the lower back. I'm exaggerating that motion. Inhale, stick the tailbone out. Exhale, draw it underneath. And now find a place right in the middle of that. So your tailbone's not sticking out or tucked under, but it's right in the middle, the center. This is the most ideal place for the pelvis to be. Take a breath to see how that feels. And try to integrate that as we come up to standing. Integrate that feeling. Now come forward onto the hands and knees. Move into downward facing dog. Knees a little bit further apart. Curl the toes under and send your hands forward. As you curl the toes under, bring the hips up and extend through the legs, but not all the way. Keep a deep bend in the knees, heels high. Send the sits bones up, lower back extends middle back, press into the hands, long through the neck. You're getting a good stretch through the back. And then if you'd like, keeping the stability in the pelvis, soften the heels to the floor. Stay for two more breaths. and activate the muscles around the outsides of the hips. Bring the sits bones closer to one another. And now walk back to the toes, slowly walking your hands back to the back edge of the mat. Keep a bend in the knees and then the forearms on the thighs. Palms together, slowly coming up. Hands to the hips. Draw the tailbone down slightly as you Push into the feet, root down through the feet, and slowly extend back up. Tall in Tadasana, mountain pose, palms forward, broad in the chest and in the heart. And then relax through the hands, open the eyes. Turning to the front edge of your mat, come into sun breath. So these are gentle way of sun salutations to warm up the body. 
and feet can be underneath the hips or a little bit wider, but again, because of the pubic symphysis, we don't want to wide too much uh, width between the legs or the feet. Inhale the hands up overhead. Exhale, bring the hands through center. And now place them either on the thighs or on the shins. As you inhale, half lift. And most of the time I uh, guide you to open through the sits bones and widen the hips, but today let's do the opposite. We'll bring the hips, hip points closer to one another. Now bend in the knees, bring the hands to the heart, inhale overhead, and then open the hands, open the arms into cactus arms. Elbows out wide, lift your heart, lift your sternum, and back bend above the bra line, above your belly. Inhale the hands overhead again, palms touch, and bring the hands to heart center. Stand in Tadasana. And now repeat that twice more, two more rounds. Inhale, lift the arms, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Energetically draw the legs together, the feet together. Bend in the knees, place the hands at the heart. Inhale, come up to standing. And then exhale, bend at the elbows, open into cactus arm or goal post arms. And keep a slight back bend, a gentle back bend. Hands up overhead, float the hands down. And then bring them down to your side. This last round, focus on the breath. Inhale. Oh, good. I like that different angle there. Good. <laughs> Exhale. Fold. Inhale. Half lift. Exhale. Inhale. Reach. Exhale. Open. Cactus arms. Inhale. Reach. Exhale. Lower. Now stand in Tadasana, mountain pose once again. Soften the knees. And then relax the hands. Come a little closer to the edge of the mat for Utkatasana chair pose. The feet will be underneath the hips, maybe a little closer together, but not touching. We still want to keep some stability there, some space for baby. Place the hands at your heart, inhale, and on the exhale, sit back gently. So another thing that may aggravate uh, pubic symphysis is deep squatting. So keep it a very gentle squat. And you can keep the hands at the heart center or send them forward in front of the shoulders with the palms facing one another. Now as you sit here in chair, come back to that space that we did on the floor, on kneeling pose, where you place the tailbone back and then tuck it under and then find the middle spot. So the tailbone is not swayed back or under the body, but right at the center. Feel the strength of your legs as well and take another breath. This is one of those poses that sneaks up on you, right? You start to feel it. <laughs> Hands at the heart and now extend through the legs and release. Ah, that's a better. <laughs> Deep breath in. And slow breath out. Move now into downward facing dog, but at the wall. This is a good option if you don't like being upside down. Sometimes being upside down in pregnancy is not very comfortable. Come close to your wall space and place both hands at the wall. Walk your legs back away from the hands and make the shape of an L with your body so that the chest is parallel to the floor. The arms are parallel to the floor. Extend the hips back and try not to broaden through the hips, but instead bring them closer to the center. Press into the feet, elongate through the tailbone and look down at the floor, but try not to let the head hang down. So there's still some energy through the back of the neck. 
This is a good stretch for the spine as well. Keep breathing slowly and deeply. And stay for one more breath. Press into the feet. And as you lift back up, extend the knees, walk your hands up the wall, and come closer to the wall again for a balanced posture. This is a modification on King Dancer. I like to call it Baby Dancer. So bring your feet underneath the hips and lean into your left foot. Place your left hand on the wall space and then bring your right heel closest to your right glute. Hold the outside of the foot. If it's available to you and you wanna open your shoulder a bit more, hold the inside of the foot and you'll notice that the shoulder, the right shoulder will open automatically. Knees close together, soften to that left knee. And then place the hand on the wall, or if you'd like to challenge your balance, take the left hand overhead and press the hip bones forward. Feel a stretch through the front quadricep, the right quadricep. Now the nice thing about being close to the wall is if you do feel out of balance or wobbly, it's right there for you to hold. Stay for two more breaths and concentrate in the mind and in the body. Now to release, bring your left hand to the wall space, slowly let go of that right foot without a slingshot, control it down good, and then come over to the right side. Shift your weight into the right foot, Shift your hands, now the right hand's on the wall space, and bring the left heel in. Hold the outside of the foot or the inside, depending on how much opening you want through the left shoulder. And now stay here or lift your right hand up and balance. Knees together, soft in the right knee, pelvis forward. Breathe slowly. And then release your right hand down first. Let go of the left foot, slowly bring it down to the floor, and then come up, up to standing again. You can turn to face the center. Find your Tadasana posture once again. And be aware of the pelvis and how it feels. Soften the hands, open the eyes, and come down to the floor space. I usually instruct to open the legs wide, but because of what we're working on today, you can open them a little bit less, a little closer to the center. Inhale the hands up overhead, and slowly come down to the mat. Bend into the knees, forearms back to the thighs. We'll kind of deconstruct the way we came up, coming down. Fingertips to the mat, and one knee at a time comes down to the floor. Sit back into the heels and then bring one uh, hip down to the floor and extend the legs forward. This is Paschimottanasana. Usually in prenatal, don't do Paschimottanasana because the belly is right there, right? I don't know if you could still do it, Violet. Can you still do your Paschimottanasana? Yes, a little bit. Do you feel comfortable? For me, it, it really did it, but... It feels better when I open my legs, though. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so you have the blanket here to sit on. That always makes forward folds a little more comfortable, gives you more space uh, through the back of the spine and also through the front of the hips. Now in Paschimottanasana, the head, the feet are forward. Both legs are forward. Flex in the heels, toes up. If you'd like some more room for your belly, especially if you're uh, further along, you place the hands behind you. Lean back, open the chest and then draw those hip points in again. Feel the extension through the back of the legs and activate through the pelvis. If you have some more space that you'd like to work with, lean forward slightly onto the fingertips. And we're not doing a deep fold forward, it's just a gentle forward. You can also extend a little bit further 
but I would recommend just a slight angle forward. No compression around the belly. That's good. Good job. <laughs> All right. Now the benefit of this posture is you're stretching the lower spine, but not aggravating any of the issues around the pubic bone. Flex in the heels, knees up. It's okay to bend the knees a little bit as well. If you'd like some more opening through the lower back. Deepen your breath. And slowly exhale. And stay for one more cycle of breath. And walk the hands back if you're leaning forward. If you're leaning back, walk them to the center again, coming back to your seat. Lean over to your right hip slightly and bring both legs close to you. Keep the, the knees together and sit on the right edge of your hip but the heels are coming close to your left glute. So both heels are together, knees together for a gentle twist. Twist over towards the right side, left hand around the right knee. Open and look behind the right shoulder. Now with the knees together, thighs together, you're again bringing that stability within. And release the twist. Turn to the left side. And as you come into a gentle twist, make sure that the navel stays forward, Violet, so that it's a, a gentle twist only in the upper back, above the belly again, just like back bends. Back bends are above the belly in pregnancy, and twists are as well. Navel forward. Bring the shoulders forward, the face forward and come back to face the center. Right hand on the floor, then the left hand overhead, lateral stretch. Bend into that right elbow slightly and open through the left ribs. Extend through the right arm, soften that left hand down and then reach in the opposite direction. Right hand overhead, stretch over to the heels Flare open the right ribs now. And then come back. Place both hands on the mat or on the floor and extend the legs forward. Now take your time. If you are experiencing some of that pain right now, it's not as easy to transition from one side to the other. I know you mentioned that too, Violet, when you transition from one side to the other, it's a little more. So taking time is okay. Lean onto that left side and bring the feet right underneath again. So the heels are closer to the right glute this time. You're leaning on the left side. And twist over to your left knee. Look over your left shoulder. Gentle twist, navel forward. Release the spiral, come back to center, and twist towards the heels. Lift up. And keep extension, elongate the spine. There you go, good. Shift your gaze forward and the body forward. Now stretch over to the left edge of the mat. Bring the right arm up overhead. Extend through the left side. Return to center and switch. Opposite direction. Left arm over. 
long through the neck. And release. Now comes the best part, Shavasana. <laughs> For Shavasana, it's best in prenatal to lie on your left side. And Violet will demonstrate that. If you have a pillow to use, Violet, underneath the head, that'd be great. If not, just you can bring the hands underneath the, the face. And then the blanket or the block can be used in between the knees. Now that is how I usually do for prenatal, but because of the sensation in the pubis right now, that might not work. I'm not sure if that would be more supportive or less. It just depends on the opening of how much you can open the legs apart at this point. How was it for you, Violet, in the past when you were feeling it? Could you put something in between, like a little block or a blanket, or was it? Not when I opened my legs. When I kept my legs closed, it felt so much better, but any okay. opening, it was just excruciating. Gotcha. Okay, so let's try that. We could try that right now. Uh, lying on the left side with the knees close together. And sometimes the reason why we put that, uh, the space between the knees is to not aggravate the hip. But in this case, we're trying to stabilize and bring everything back together. So, lying on your left side. You look very comfy, Violet. <laughs> Rest here with your baby just a few moments. A short Shavasana. Close the eyes. And bring your focus within. Notice any movement from your baby, any sensations. And also be aware of how your pelvis feels right now. Notice how you feel after this practice. And rest quietly for a few moments. I'll mind the time for you and let you know when it's time to come back. Deep in your breath now. Slowly come back and return your awareness. Wiggle fingers and toes. Extend your limbs, arms and legs. Observe, observe for a moment how you're feeling. Observe the effects of your practice. Now place the hands by your side, push into the hands, and slowly come up to a seat. You can sit on the knees again, on the heels, kneeling pose, or extend the legs forward. Now bring the hands to your heart. Deep in your breath. And bow to your heart for a moment. 
Feel gratitude for this time that you've taken to heal and to nourish yourself and your baby. I thank you for sharing your practice with me and allowing me to guide you. The light within me honors and respects the light within you. Namaste.